All right, so yes. Just one second, I will tell my father yeah. not to talk You are starting now? Okay, we are live now, okay. Okay. Okay, so I'll go to see the comment. The are now streaming on Facebook. Shouldn't we wait right. a bit for people it's, to gather? are live now? Okay. Okay. We should wait a, way, a, a bit for people to gather, We're right? Okay. Yeah. No problem. Okay. And uh, please, if yes, you we are live mind. now. Can you, Miriam, yes. introduce the topic? Thank you. Yes, of course. So, hi, everyone. Um, first of all, I want to thank you, all of you, for attending this um, webinar. Uh, I mean, with this current yeah. situation, there is no better time than this one to educate ourselves, read as much as we can, and simply enrich our knowledge and put and grab as many food as we can and put it all in our dish. So I will begin by introducing myself. My name is Miriam Borwe and I study in the English department at Mohammed V University. I majored in cultural studies and I'm a trainee in the TEFL program with Mr. Uh, Hussein. I'm also a young leader and a leader in the near future, if God hopes so. Uh, so as, as I said, I'm also a young leader uh, in the Global Bus Foundation, or as known as the GBF. And I'll be the moderator of today's webinar, like you attendees. So I'll introduce you uh, to GBF and what it aims at. So Global Bus Foundation is a non-governmental organization based in Morocco. Its main focus is to empower others, both youth and teachers, by offering its interest in services like facilitating things for people to give presentations or conduct workshops, as well as offering TEFL courses and organizing seminars and conferences. So GBF actually empower and pack both teachers and youth with the necessary skills related to leadership, global education, and peace building. GBF has trained and coached both youth and teachers in several countries such as Vietnam, China, um, India, Spain, and the list is long. As you might see, we work not only locally, but also globally. We do believe in changing lives by believing in others and simply um, serve as the amplifier that loudens people's voices. So um, welcome to this webinar. We actually conducted three episodes before this one, and this is the fourth one and hoping for more to come in in your ways. So now I shall move to introduce our speaker of the day, Mr. Hussein Qasas. I will only mention some of his achievements. He is an MBA holder um, uh, with a focus on education with quality in quality education from the Cardiff University in the UK and also is a master holder in education from Mohammed V University. He is the co-founder of GBF, a TEFL uh, program coordinator, a Rabat conference international conference uh, coordinator also. He has trained and coached teachers in Morocco, Tunisia, and Spain, and he actually spoke in several international conferences due to his eagerness to positively impact others and enlighten others with what, with what, what he knows. So thank you, Mr. Salas, for sharing your knowledge with us today. Um, today's talk is about top ways to teach challenging grammar points to fast and slow learners. So, um, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Stras, uh, you can go to the next slide. Yeah. So let's just admit something. Um, personally, when I was a student, I always felt that grammar lessons 
are a bit boring and difficult. But now that I'm a TIFL trainee, I always ask why and how can we transform the boring into the interesting and the difficult into the easy. That's what we're going to learn throughout this webinar. Mr. Hussein will enrich us with his knowledge and by the end of this talk, you will be packed with skills, strategies, techniques, uh, of teaching boring and difficult and learning as well. So I've just remembered uh, a quote that says, uh, you should know your why to know your way. Uh, that's the aim of this webinar. You will get to learn the challenges that can face you in teaching difficult grammar points. You will know the two frameworks, the difficult easy framework, as you can see in the slide, and the difficult easy framework. And also you will get to know how to apply the two frameworks in your class. And lastly, we will wrap up with a discussion on the application of the two frameworks. So by the end of this talk, you will know your why, and eventually you will know your way to how to teach challenging grammar points to fast and slow learners. So the floor is yours, Mr. Um, Hussein. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Maryam, for this yes. um, introduction. All right. Good. So uh, I'm very glad to, um, to be with you again, um, discussing, dealing, and talking about a very interesting topic, which is grammar, and most importantly, how to teach very challenging grammar lessons, because both teachers and students either hate or don't like or feel frustrated. Today, I'm going to provide you with two frameworks that will help the difficult lesson be interesting, and uh, sorry, be easy and uh, the boring lesson, okay, become or becomes very interesting. Good, so here before the lesson, these are um, main questions, okay, that we have to ask ourselves, okay? So for example, question number one, what questions should I think about when teaching difficult grammar points? It's very important. I'm going to teach tomorrow this difficult lesson. So what are the questions that I have to ask myself? Number two, of course, what are the difficulties, the troubles, the problems um, that may, uh, my, uh, may students encounter, okay? And of course, to avoid these troubles, to deal with these troubles, with these problems, we need the techniques. Okay, so what techniques should I use? And of course, to teach one hour or two hours might be very boring. So we have to create fun learning environment. So how to create fun learning environment? And the last question is, do I have to teach everything? Because when we talk about um, difficult grammar lessons, we talk about the length, they, they may be long. So they may take more than one hour. So do I have to teach everything about that grammar lesson or I have to divide it into sessions, into parts? So these are the questions that we are going to try to find their answers during this session. Good, now, um, yes, Miriam. So what do you think? What challenges the audience may have, may think about? when teaching difficult grammar lessons? I think they may face a lot of challenges, uh, challenges like they might um, not uh, teach the, the meaning of each um, word, or they might teach uh, the meaning, or, or, or maybe they would teach everything uh, in one session. They would bombard their students with a lot of information, and they, their students will eventually feel demotivated. All right, very interesting. So what about the audience? Can you please write some of the challenges that teachers may face? So what do you think? Yeah, can you please try? The Maria, Maria said, grammar is always challenging matter in TEFL. Uh, Amel said, the meaning versus the form. Lulu said, students' attitude toward grammar. Yes. Interesting. Good. Yeah, other challenges that you may face? Any other ideas? It's okay if you're, um, I mean, there's no right or wrong answer. You can write whatever you think okay. is right. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. So some Fatima, of these, yeah. 
I'm sorry to interrupt you, but Fatema said students find grammar boring. Abdelmajid said time management. And we that also said consumes more time. Um, Fuad says the right use of tense, a form versus use, lack of interest, time consuming, yes. All right, very interesting challenge that you mentioned. And the majority talks about time. All right, very yeah. interesting point to mention. Good, so these are the challenges. Number one, time consuming. Yes, to teach the form, to teach the meaning, to teach the use of the grammar points is, uh, all, all these are time consuming, okay? It's a lot of time. And also for preparation. Number two, we are teaching mixed ability classes. And I repeat again, I don't say that I teach first grade or second grade, but I say I teach a number of learners. They have different abilities, okay? There is a problem here. Number three, teachers negative thinking about difficult grammar. As a teacher at home, and you have this idea that, oh, oh my God, it's a very difficult lesson. Students find it boring. Of course, the result, students will find it boring and you will find it difficult. So we have to teach this attitude from negative to positive. We have to think about the ways. Of course, there are solutions to solve this issue, okay? And number four, different learning styles. You are not teaching one learning style, but different. Can still be visual learners, auditory, some are good at moving, good at seeing, good at writing. So you have to design activities, okay, to suit the different learning styles. So it's difficult again, challenging. And of course, the textbook that you use never suit all levels. The textbook is just a way, and that way is just a tool, and that tool you have to adapt it according to the different learning styles you have. So these are some of the challenges. Now, it starts with the first framework. This framework, I, I, I gave it a name, boring, interesting framework, which means if you miss the majority of these techniques, you will have a boring lesson. If you integrate the majority of these techniques, you will have an interesting lesson. So what are these? We have fun, creating fun new environment, context, which is grammar, starts with creating context, put the structure in, a, in context. Number four, color coding and diagramming. Use colors for students to observe, to notice the structure, because you are going to opt for learner-centered approach. Don't spoon, don't spoon feed them, don't give them uh, the information, okay? You are not the source of knowledge. And then we have KISS. I'm going to explain what we're doing by KISS first, but I, I would like, uh, if you can write in the chat box, what does it mean KISS here? So the acronyms stand for what? And then we have think, pair, and share. So when you are teaching challenging grammar lessons, number one, it gives students time to think, to analyze, to observe. Number two, to compare with his partner or her partner. And number three, to share with the whole class. Very interesting technique, okay. Then we have communicative activities. You have to use activities based on communication because we teach language and language is a mean of or is a means of communication. Okay. Then we have ICT, including the information communication technology using videos, songs, laptops, um, 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 slides in your um, lessons. And of course, here we have contest. Contest is competition. You can have kind of competition in your class. Dictionary, as I told you, I'm not the source of knowledge. If there is something difficult, I ask my learners to use their dictionary to keep it as a good habit. Because if you keep explaining to them, they will keep the negative habit, the bad habit, all the time depending on the teacher. And the last one is grouping. You group them according to the levels or you mix them, etc. Now let's go back to KISS. So what does this mean KISS when you are teaching, okay? And when you are making the lesson, changing from boring to interesting, what does this, what does it mean? So we have- they got it. All right, Amen. Yunus, they all said keep it simple and specific. Perfect. Keep it short and simple. Keep mm -hmm. it short and simple, all of them. Perfect. Yeah, I'm proud of you. You know this. Yeah. So it's, it's very important. Blah, blah, blah. Confuse your learners. Don't explain a lot. Demonstrate. Use pictures. Short instructions. Full stop. Finished. Okay, so if you use all these techniques, you will have a very interesting lesson. 
If you use some of them, of course, you will have a, a, an interesting lesson. If you miss the majority of these techniques, you will have boring lesson, okay. Now, let's go back to, or let's see this. This is a, an example. It's the grammar lesson take, uh, taken from ticket into English, first back. It's a Moroccan textbook. This is um, uh, 11th grade. Now I want you here, I want you here just to see. Okay, just one second. Good. So this is boring, interesting framework. I want you to look at activity A, activity B and activity C. And my question, do you think that moving from A to B to see, do you think there is interest? Is there motivation? Is there fun? Is there communication? So what do you think about these types of activities? What is missing here? What is missing? Look at activity A, B, and C. And look at the boring, interesting framework. Can you please write in the chat box? There is something very important missing in this lesson. I'm waiting for your response. Yeah, okay, yeah. Just guess. I think they need some time to read. Yes, okay. Um, Amal said a color coding is missing. Uh-huh, interesting. No group work, we had said no group work. Good. No peer work also. Um, Abdelmunayim said neither interesting nor fun. The context, Awatif said the context, who add pictures. Um, Abdelmunayim again, no pictures to illustrate, color coding, grouping, no communicative uh, interaction. Good. Yes, very great um, ideas. Wow. Colors, pictures, no context. Oh. Good, this is very important. Here, I want to raise your awareness. Okay, just one second. I want to raise your awareness here that there is something missing, which is uh, activities based on communication. So look here, it starts with A. So A, there is just you study, you analyze, you read, and you match. Activity B, gap filling. We are still working at the level of sentences, okay? And C, uh, okay, use a dictionary. So here, something very important. Communicative language teaching is about uh, viewing language as a means of communication. So we have to use communicative activities. So activity A, activity B, activity C, they are not this one, communicative activities. So this is what, what makes the lesson number one boring and difficult because students should interact, should work together. There must be communication. So now my question, how can you make it communicative? Can you give me some examples? Can you write in the chat box? Yes, please. Um, Hakima said no illustration. Okay, good. How can we make it communicative? So what kind of activities? Fatima said these are mechanical activities. Excellent, yes. I mean, a lot of color coding pictures. Start good. with pictures, integrating skills. All right. Sumia said working with a classmate. Dialogues, Abdelmanim said dialogues. All um, right, very interesting. So yeah, very interesting, um, um, I mean, uh, suggestions. So using dialogues, this kind of activities, role plays, etc. So that's why here, as you see, there is something that this lesson lacks something which is communicative activity. So as a teacher, you have to adapt the textbook. You have to add communicative activities. Good, let's move on to the next one. So here, 
Now, another framework, which is difficult, easy framework. This is about teaching mixed ability classes. Now, when you are teaching challenging grammar lessons, of course, you will have mixed ability classes. One level, one class, you have different students, different levels, okay. Now, how can you handle this situation? It's very difficult. So this framework, I call it difficult, easy. The, the lesson is difficult. Mixed ability classes make the lesson difficult also. And how can you make it easy? Now, now here, you have two types of learners. You have low achievers and high achievers. Now, with low achievers, you have to simplify more. With high achievers, you have to challenge them, add challenges. Okay. You explain more here. Simplify what? Using visual aids, using pictures, giving them choices, um, short, um, clear instructions. Challenges give more um, difficult tasks. Okay. If they finish writing, tell them to, um, to give a presentation or, uh, uh, I mean, give them other tasks. Now, here for low achievers, you reduce the output and for the high achievers, you increase the input. Now, for the audience, I want you to tell me what do we mean by output and input? Can you please write in, your, in the chat box? What do we mean by input and output? Um, we're waiting for your answers. What do you mean by input and output? Scaffolding, uh, Abdelmonim said scaffolding, Ajar eight, Hamu, scaffolding. Good, interesting. Input, um, input is reading and listening. Output is students' production. Input, uh, as Matt said, input language, they get output, output language they produce. Okay, so input lang language they get and output language they produce. Output is what students produce, input the internal information and output the external information. Output speaking and writing. Um, we just said All output. Right, that's very interesting. Yeah. Good, that's, that's interesting. So the, uh, here, reducing the output. Reducing the output means reducing the amount of speaking and uh, writing. And here we have plus the input. Here for the high achievers, we increase the input. Now, here we have reduced frustration. Reduced frustration for low achievers because they have low level, okay. We have to encourage them, motivate them. And for high achievers, we have to prevent boredom. Now, for low achievers, we have to raise their self-esteem. They have a, a negative image about themselves. I don't, I'm not good at English, okay? I'm not, I don't have a good level. So the job for a teacher when dealing with low achievers is to raise their self-esteem. Now, for high achievers, you keep self-esteem high. Now, for both of them, low achievers and high achievers, you motivate and engage. The two now are going to implement this with the coming lessons. Okay, good. Now look here. This lesson, sorry, this lesson is taken from Gateway, first pack. First pack is 11th grade. It's again phrasal verb. So as you see here, if you compare this lesson with the previous lesson, these are Moroccan textbooks, they are mechanical, they are based on the level of sentences. So here, let me share or let me highlight. It's, it's really interesting here. We have creating the context, leading question. That's good. Okay. And here we have B. Read the text again and underline. Here we are highlighting the form and the meaning. But see an activity here, it's a mechanical. It's um, at the level of sentences. Again, there is no communication, no communication activities. B, matching exercises, they match. And E, gap filling, they fill in the gaps. 
So here, where is communication? Students need to communicate. See, students need to work together, okay? Now, when we talk about difficult and easy framework, you are not teaching one level, but you are teaching mixed ability classes, which means that exercise C may be difficult for um, low achievers. Now, how can you facilitate exercise C, filling each blank with one of the phrasal verbs from the text? So we can keep C for high achievers, but for low achievers, we can facilitate. For example, we can give them choices, choice A, B, and C. We can design two activities, two materials, one for high achievers and one for low achievers. And we put them into groups, the same level in this group and the other level in that group, okay. And we, we give them different activities, but C is a, a bit easy by giving them choice A, B, C. But for high achievers, we keep it as it is, which means again, you have to adapt the textbook. And this framework will help you a lot when you are dealing with mixed ability classes. So here, reduce the output. I'm not going to ask low achievers to talk a lot because they are, they are weak learners. But for high achievers, I'm going to ask them to write, to talk, to speak, okay, to add more challenges. All right. Is this clear so far? No comment? Yes, I see no questions at all. All right. Good, that's interesting. So no question? No questions. No um, if you have any questions, please write them in the comment box. All right, that's interesting. Okay, Jihad said, I have a question, please. Okay, Jihad. Go ahead. Um, Jihad, we're waiting for your question. We saw said it's clear. All right, that's interesting. Good. So let me move to the next slide. Okay. Yes. Um, before you move on, please just like to clarify, I guess. Um, someone said input is input can be the knowledge that is being is is been received from the teacher, while output is the knowledge produced by the students. Excellent. Yeah, okay. Very yes. Very interesting. Okay. Good. So let me move to the next slide. Good. Now. Applying the two frameworks. Framework number one, boring, interesting framework. And framework number two, difficult, easy framework. So which challenging grammar lesson do you think we will design and apply for the two frameworks now? What do you think? Can you give us the name of the grammar lesson that you are going to work on right now? A very challenging grammar lesson. Give us some examples. Can you guess? You can give us any um, grammar lesson. It could be a reported speech or anything. Do you understand the question? Tenses, passive. Interesting. Models, passive voice, reported speech, phrasal verbs, reported speech, reported speech, question tag, models, past perfect, conditionals, types of clauses, models, reported speech, reported speech, passive voice, models, report conditionals, um, the same questions are, are reported. All right, very interesting. Good, thank you. So let's see. Okay, just one second. So today's lesson that we are going to work on is uh, phrasal verbs. Okay, so do you think is it a challenging lesson for both teachers and learners or not? Can you please just write yes or no? Do 
just try yes or no. Yes, they all, um, our text says yes. The kid is so yes, yes, yes. All right, that's yes, interesting. Yes. Good, thank you, that's nice. So here, as you can see, phrasal verbs. So it's very challenging, why? Number one is a bit long, and number two is complicated. So number one, are you going to teach the meaning or the form or both? Number two, if you teach meaning, are you going to teach literal meaning or metaphorical mean or both? Now, if you teach the form, are you going to teach the three part phrasal verbs, the two part phrasal verbs, intransitive, transitive, superable, insuperable? So these are very interesting questions. Now I want to teach, I have only one hour. Novice teachers, what do they do? They teach everything. And this is a very common mistake that um, novice teachers make. We all the time say learning is a process. Students need time to learn. So the best way is to divide the challenging grammar lesson into sessions. Session number one, session number two, and number two, sorry, and why not session number three? So here, what do you think? What are you going to teach? If you want to teach the form, what are you going to teach exactly? Are you going to teach the three or the two or can you please give me just um, examples? What are you going to teach exactly when dealing with the form? Can you please write in the chat box? Um, so your question was when teaching forms, what are we going to teach first, right? Uh, uh, Hafida says we teach first difficulty at a time, one difficulty at a time. Halima bin Amur said, can't hear you well, please. There are, um, we did also, Iman, they cannot hear you very well. Could you please raise um, the volume? Uh, Fatima, a low voice teacher. Okay, um, that, that's interesting, that's interesting. So this, this is a very interesting question that you should ask yourself. What are you going to teach exactly, okay? And of course, you are not going to teach everything if you have only one or one hour and 30 minutes. Okay, good. So let's see what we are going to teach. So basically when dealing with phrasal verbs, you teach the form. You teach only two parts phrasal verbs, two parts. Second session, you can deal with the three parts phrasal verbs. You teach only transitive verbs. Second session, you deal with the intransitive. Uh, for the meaning, you can teach only literal. The coming session, you teach the two, um, I mean the metaphorical. Learning is a process. They are, not go they are not going to learn everything in one hour. You are going just to confuse them. So please, when dealing with challenging grammar, points with grammar lessons, chunk it, divide it, the breakdown structure. Okay, so let's see here. The first contact or the first class is cool. Our students should feel at ease, should feel comfortable. So here we have one hour class, one hour. We are going to teach two slow and fast learners, mixed ability classes. Number one, we are going to present the meaning, literal and metaphorical, we can deal with it. Number two, we are going to present the form, two parts phrasal verbs. I don't care about three parts phrasal verbs. Learn is a process. Next session, okay. Number four, don't deal with exceptions at first. Please avoid irregular forms in the beginning when you are teaching challenging um, grammar lessons. Exceptions, the coming sessions. And of course, focus on communicative activities. They are very important to motivate your learners to practice the language. And the last one, at the end, students may feel bored, create fun and enjoyable learning environment. You can design activities based on fun. Okay, good. Now, this is again, Moroccan textbook. It's a um, ticket to English. 
This is grammar. And as you see here, it's very interesting. How many activities? So let's see. So activity number one, activity number two, activity number three, activity number four, activity number five, number six, and number seven. Now, I want you to go back to a boring, interesting framework. What is missing in this lesson? What is missing? Uh, I'm gonna give you one minute. Just try to read the activity, the instructions carefully and tell me what is missing. Um, uh, while they read Khalid Warit, he said communicative for forms. Uh, I mean, he didn't understand that. Communicative for forms. Sorry, there's a question? The question just says communicative for forms. I don't think, can you, could you please clarify your question, Khalid? Abdesamia says dialogue maybe. Uh, the thing that- Excellent, very interesting idea. Any other ideas? Okay. Uh, Abdul Munim says overloaded. Um, Samira says mechanical activities. Abdul Samia, um, okay. What's missing is the context, raise students' interest. It's not well structured. We dad says context, Ali. Um, output is missing. Um, our communication Very is missing. Very interesting. That's nice. Yeah. Interesting. Um, good. No. Good. Now, I want here is the same. So we talked about the first book, textbook, the second textbook, and this is the third textbook. And they dealt with the same way when teaching uh, phrasal verbs. All these activities, they are mechanical activities. You see, there is something missing, which is communication, communication activities. So your job as a teacher to change the lesson from boring to interesting or from difficult to easy, integrate uh, or design communication activities. Some of you mentioned very interesting ideas like dialogues that were interesting, okay. Dialogues, um, role plays, etc. Very interesting. Okay, good. Now, and as you see here, we have seven activities. Can you teach all these activities in one session? No way, you cannot. So you have to adapt this textbook and to design activities for session number one and activities for session number two. Now we are going to move to the next slide and then we are gonna elaborate more. Yeah, and before, uh, yeah, sorry, just one second, good. Now here, we are going now to start our, um, uh, our lesson that we are going to design all together. This is a typical grammar lesson. A typical grammar lesson starts with building interest. All the time you have to think of the tools to build interest. Number two, creating context. Number three, highlighting the meaning and form. Number four, concept checking. You, you have to check understanding if students understood or not. And number five, you summarize the rule, which means that we are using or are opting for learner-centered approach, inductive. The rule is at the end. We give examples, then the rule, okay. Then we, we start with practice. And there are two types of practices. Restricted practice. Here I said, I added the, the, the restricted practice can be communicative or non-communicative, no problem. But for the practice, restrictive practice number two, it must be communicative. Okay. So practice number one, they report, they stand, they answer, they go to the board, okay, they share. Practice number two, again, they stand, okay, they share, they go to the board, they talk together. And free practice is the production stage. And here I add three. Communicative activities, 
plus contest, competition, and fun. Because it's the end of the lesson. Students may feel bored, may feel exhausted, may feel um, frustrated. Now we have to try to help them, okay? Get motivated again and reporting back. So this is a very typ typical lesson for um, teaching grammar. Um, I mean, very challenging grammar lessons. Okay, now let me move to the next slide. Then we explain more. So, so here, how to build interest? Can you, can you suggest, give us some suggestions of building interest? Now we are going to teach phrasal verbs. Okay, what suggestion, I mean, sorry, what um, tools are you going to use to build interest? Can you please write in the chat box? We will give them some time to write how to build interest and keep your students motivated. Okay, as Samia said, I have a question. If we are dealing with baccalaureate students, what's more preferable and practical to teach inductively or deductively? Uh, can you please Miriam, repeat the, second, the, the question? Okay, so when teaching baccalaureate, when dealing with baccalaureate students, uh, is it uh, more preferable and practical to teach inductively or deductively? All right, this is very interesting question. Um, basically, there is no perfect way. There is no per perfect method. All the time we have to take into account our learners' needs, learners' wants, um, learners' age and the size of the classroom. So when you are dealing with second back, you can mix the two, but you depend heavily on inductive because we are teaching learners. We are not the spoon feeders. We are not the source of knowledge. We have to encourage uh, autonomous learning. So if we use um, deductive methods all the time, students will be passive in class. We can use deductive when we, when we feel that the lesson is very complicated, like a reported speech. You can start with deductive, okay. But with other lessons, use the inductive because inductive encourages learners to be autonomous learners and to be active and motivated in the classroom, okay. So you can from time to time use, but basically we depend most of the time on inductive methods. At some points, when some lessons are very challenging, then we can move to the deductive way, okay. So what are the, the tools? Any suggestions? Oh, for, yes, yes, they, they've answered for the tools. Uh, Jihad says using realia. Omar says visual aids. Widad says dialogue. Abdul Kabir says a very typical grammar lesson. Um, Iman says personalization. Uh, Najwa create context, Lulu storytelling. Gray has now started with a role play. Widad using ICT, Hassan dialogue. Again, Omar uh, using pictures and posters, using song like carry on song. This was by Abdul Rizzaq. Um, Samira says pictures. Uh, Sophia using real objects. Yes. A Hakima storytelling or a game. All right, very interesting. Wow. I liked all these tools. Okay, they are really interesting. Thank you. Yeah. So here, I'm, um, um, I'm going to use. Uh, another technique, which is, um, yeah, I'm going to the next slide to see it. Okay. Yeah, sharing a real story uh, with your learners. And you, 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 if you can remember, uh, I mentioned in the last webinar that we as human beings, we love listening to people's um, real stories, family stories, life stories, personal stories. So here I'm going to start with a real story that happened to me. And this story has a strong connection with phrasal verbs. Okay, so uh, yeah, Umayma, our moderator, or oh, sorry, Maryam, our moderator, can you please read this um, story that happened to me? Okay, the, uh, the verb take out was about to get the whole family crazy. My brother and his American wife came to spend Ramadan with us. It was the first day in Ramadan. My brother's wife did a great job and fasted the first day with us together. During having all Fatur together, I told her we would take you out since you fasted Ramadan. The American wife got too upset and later angry. She did not understand what I meant by take her out. 
she thought she was not welcomed at home because I might take her out um, as we do with rubbish. Hopefully my brother could figure out the situation and explain to her that to take someone out means to celebrate. My brother's wife got happy and excited because she would go out with the family and celebrate together. Uh, you see how English language is crazy. Uh, so here just yeah. adding some, some fun, um, um, drawing attention, okay. And this happened to me. So it's very interesting, okay, to build interest by sharing with students your real stories. And this happened to me. And here I'm paving the way, okay, tell my learners that phrasal verbs meanings are very confusing. Even native speakers sometimes don't know the meaning, okay. And this happened to me. And of course, my learners had so much fun. And they started asking me a lot of questions. What's the name of the American um, woman? How old is she? And something like that, okay. So I created interest or I built interest using a real story. So it's really interesting. If you think there's a connection between your real story and the lesson you are going to, to teach, share it with your learners, okay. So please, can you write in the chat box, do you find it interesting to share your real stories with learners when, when building int interest. Okay. Can you please? Uh... Yes, I will read. I will go up a bit. Um, and Samia said, sharing stories is your favorite, Mr. <laughs> yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, funny stories. Yes, of course. It's really crazy. Yes, they all agree that sharing stories all is right. very That's good. nice. Great. So please try to share with your learners, your real stories, especially if they have got connections between you and the lesson. Good, the second one, and you know, a song to sing in class, okay? And here there's a connection between the song and the lesson phrasal verbs. So when you are teaching challenging lessons, you have to, to prepare, you have to search for information. Which song, which conversation, which um, uh, vocabulary words, uh, try to search for the information that has a relationship with the lesson that you are going to teach. And I found that there is a song, Another Day in Paradise by Phil Collins. Yeah, he used some phrasal verbs. And of course, students enjoy their teachers to sing in class. And as you know, I don't have a very good voice, but I enjoy having fun with my learners because the aim behind singing is not to show them that I have a good voice because I know I don't have a good voice, but just to build interest. And after that, we sing together. Okay, good. Now the audience, do you want me to sing again or not? And someone says, yes. <laughs> So please, yes or no? It, please, yes, and Samia said, can you please uh, sing it, please, Mr. Al Hussein? All Just right. It. <laughs> Thank you, I'm going to try, okay. So please, you sing with me, okay. I'm not good, I know that you are much better than me, but of course, uh, my job is not to be um, excellent or to be a very good singer, but I'm just doing my job, which is teaching, okay. So I say, hello, my students, how are you? Fine, good. Today, I'm going to sing a very, a very good song. Do you like to listen to me? Yes, yes, go ahead, teacher. Thank you, so listen to me. But after that, please, I want you to sing with me together after I finish. Deal, you promise? Perfect, so let's go ahead. All right. <clears throat> Can I start again? I'm sorry, I can't. I feel shy. This is what students, this is what teachers say. Oh, I can't sing in front of students. They make fun of me. You know, it's difficult. Yeah, no, give it a try. Don't care, just sing, okay? And after that, students will get used to what you are saying, okay? So let's start. Another day in paradise, okay. She calls out to the man on the street, Sir, can you help me? It's cold and there's nowhere to sleep. Is there somewhere you can tell me? He walks on, doesn't look back. He pretends he can hear her, starts to whistle as he crosses the street. Seems embarrassed to be there. There, I'm just having fun with my kids. 
oh, think twice. It's another day for you and me in paradise. Oh, think twice. It's another day for you, you and me in paradise. She calls out to the man on the street. He can see she's been crying. She got bliss, it's a try, okay. So you just give it a try, okay. And you will see that students, they will enjoy, not your voice. They will enjoy the way you sing and they are gonna have fun. In the very beginning, they may, they may make fun of you. Okay, but later they will take it as part of learning, as part, especially if you repeat the first time, the second time, okay. Sometimes I, I, I have much fun with my learners. I say, now let's sing this song as if we are singing um, um, like um, pop music, pop Moroccan music or um, hip hop or um, rap, etc. okay. And they, they change the the voice, okay, and the song, okay, etc. So you can have a lot of fun with learners, especially if you sing with them. And as you see here, I used color coding. Calls out, look back, calls out, okay. I'm paving the way to the main lesson, which is phrasal verbs, okay. I may explain what doing by to call out, when you speak louder, okay, to call someone, okay and look back, et cetera. Okay, good. Now, we finish with building interest. Okay, now we move to, oh yeah, I forgot. You have to sing all together, I forgot. Yes, uh, Miriam and I and oh, everyone yeah. are going to sing together. Okay, are you ready? Good, one, two, three. She calls out, yes, Miriam. She calls out. I don't know the, the song. On the, yeah, just follow me, okay. Okay. She calls out to the man on the street. <laughs> Sir, can you can help, you help me? me? It's cold and I've nowhere to sleep. Please. Is there somewhere you Please. can tell Please. me? He walks on, doesn't look back. He pretends he can hear her start to whistle as he crosses the street seems embarrassed to be there <laughs> oh think twice because it's another day for you and me in paradise oh think twice because it's another day for you yeah by the way the windows broke down here in my in my room okay very bad boys i'm just oh kidding okay Please, uh, the audience, did you sing with us or not? Yes, and don't mind our, I mean, my voice <laughs> in singing. All right, good. Um, sir, please, um, before moving on, there are two questions. Yes, and please. basically, they are like the same. So we dad says, don't you think that uh, sharing a story to teach only one phrasal verb is time consuming? And Mohammed, I guess, also asked, like nearly the same question. Could we say that spending five to 10 minutes just trying to get students engaged is a waste of time? Okay, interesting questions. For question number one, we have to ask why, why do we build interest? I'm building interest, not creating context. I'm not presenting the phrasal verbs. I'm not presenting. I haven't started the presentation of creating the context of my lesson, but I just trying to motivate students will have fun, then we start. Three, four minutes are enough, then you start, okay. Good, can you remind me for the second question? Um, the second question says, can we say that spending five to 10 minutes just trying to get students engaged is a waste of time? Yeah, of course, you cannot motivate students for five to seven minutes. Five, seven minutes, these are activities they are going to do, okay. But to motivate them, you can use a song, Song is part of motivation. You can use a picture, you can have fun, okay? You can put them together, it's motivation. But spending seven to eight minutes just for the sake of engagement and motivation, yeah, I agree, it's a, it's a waste of time. Okay, good, let's move on to the next one. Now, now we are going to start the presentation. The presentation, and we are going to teach uh, fast and slow learners. Now, this presentation is for slow learners. I'm going here, look here, simplifying and re reducing input. Okay, so look here. 
What do these sentences have in common? Number one, number two, number three, number four. Now, my question, to, to simplify for uh, slow learners, I use the visual aids, look here, for students to see. Number two, look at the sentences. They are very short and very simple. So simplifying and reducing the output and input. Okay, and I'm using color coding for students to observe. So please turn on the TV. There is TV and uh, the remote control. Okay. British people prefer to eat out. They often go to restaurants and there is restaurants here. Number three, once you finish handing your exam sheet, etc. okay. And number four, turn down, please. So this one you match it with here and this one with here, okay. Just one second. So this is uh, here. Okay, and this is the restaurant here. And this is to, to hand in the exam here. Good, and this one to turn down the music is here. Now I finish. This is, I designed two, two materials. One for slow learners and one for fast learners. I'm going to quickly go to, sorry, to the fast learners. Look here. For fast learners, I, I added challenges. So adding challenges and increasing output. They are going to speak a lot. Look here, example, uh, modeling. I always get up early. I often get good marks. So my students, what do you notice here? Look here, I always get up early. I often get good marks. Ah, oh, we have two. Good, and this get. So to get what? Get good mark, like to have something, okay, you achieve something. Get up, oh, the meaning changes, good. Now, can you give me, can you complete the circles with other verbs, turn. So increasing the output, I'm challenging my fast learners because they have good, good level. They give me turn on, okay, put on, etc. And here I'm going to use diagramming shapes to help them. So look here, the arrow is down, the is up, okay. And look here, this is out, this is in. So each out, each in, etc. okay. So look at the two activities. If you go back to easy or difficult, easy framework, you will see that with the slow learners, we facilitate and we reduce the output and input. But for fast learners, we add challenges and we increase the output. Good, now we finish with the presentation. Good, now here, we finish with the presentation. The next stage is uh, which one to teach first, the form or the meaning? Please, can you write quickly? To teach first, the form or the meaning when you are dealing with grammar? Can you please write? Form or meaning. So waiting for them to reply, uh, can I, uh, there are some questions. Um, Fatima says, how, how much time can we give to the song just seen, or maybe to any song? Can you please? Uh, um, please again? Fatima says, how much time can we give to the song just seen, or I mean to any um, song? Yeah, so we are building interest, three, four minutes are enough. Three to four minutes are enough because the, the, I'm not going to practice the song, sing the song, but just to have some fun to create or to, in, to build interest, then you move on. Okay, good. So is it the um, form or the meaning? Uh, uh, Samira says, depends. Wilad says, form, Halima form, Lulu meaning, Najwa form, Samira form, Khawla form, Asma meaning, Sofia form. It All depends. Right, interesting. So the majority said the form, then the meaning. Yeah. All right, so, so let's move on to the next slide and see. Good. So here, it's better to study the meaning of the grammar before looking at the form, because examining how something is made without understanding what it, what it means can be frustrating. Now, you, you teach them simple past. They cannot use the play played if they don't know the meaning. How can they use I played? And they don't know the meaning. So it's good to start with the meaning. This is the, the best way. 
the meaning than the form when dealing with challenging grammar um, points. Good. Now, look here. We present the meaning and the form like this. Again, Bob eats all the food because he's hungry. Bob eats out because he likes going to the restaurant. Bob eats in because he has no work. So he prepares at home. This is one material for the two levels, low and slow, uh, sorry, low and fast learners. And as you can see here, these sentences, number one, they are very simple. Number two, color coding. Number three, the keywords, hangry, to eat up, restaurant, eat out, home, eat in. So I'm facilitating the learning process for the two levels, for the two learners. And here, Phrasal verb, I'm using this, this form for visual learners. I'm doing my best to satisfy the different learning styles, kinesthetic, visual, auditory, etc. Okay. So verb each and particle up, the meaning changes. Blah, 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 confuse your learners. I'm not talking a lot. Good. Now I presented the mean and the form. The next stage is concept checking. I have to, to make sure that my learners understand the mean and the form. I'm going to ask important questions. And please, I will repeat this one. Never ask your learners, do you understand? It's not a good uh, um, question for checking understanding. Use concept questions, concept questions. Uh, for example, here, do you eat out at a restaurant or at home? Where do you eat out? Put the, put the phrasal verb eat out in a sentence, uh, adding challenges. What does it eat out mean in Arabic? Now, we have four. Please, for the audience, I want you to tell me which examples are for slow learners and which uh, concept questions for um, fast learners. So we have one, two, three, four. Can you please, let's start with slow learners. What are the questions? Is it one, two, three, or four? Can you please? Okay, so um, giving them the time to write, there's a question by Khalid. Uh, he says, would you please elaborate on form and meaning? Okay, good. Yes, I'm going to, I'm going to deal with this at the end, okay? So as not to be a, a bit behind schedule. Yeah, the form and meaning is very important. So at the end of the discussion, please Marim, remind me to, um, to deal with this one. Now, my yes, question, which, which concept questions we should or are for slow learners and which ones are for fast learners from one to four. Can you please, let's start with slow learners. Is it one, two, three or four? Elma says one, Halima two, uh, what if one, Huda one, Najwa one and three, uh, Samira one and four for slow, Hafida one, Samira one, Fatima one and two. Okay, interesting. So let's start with uh, slow learners. Do you eat out at a restaurant or at home? Remember, we said, if you want to facilitate the learning process of your learners, give them choices. So this is for slow learners. Okay, slow learners. Where do you eat? Ah, here they should produce the language, it's difficult. So this one, no, put the phrasal verb eat out in a sentence, it's hard. What does eat out mean in Arabic? This is very easy. So question one and four are for slow learners because you are teaching mixed ability classes. When you are making sure that students understand or not, try to differentiate instructions. So one and four, slow learners, and two and three are for fast learners. Okay, good. Any comments? No? No, no comments. Good. Good, now let's move on to the next slide. Now, for, yeah, please, can you write in the chat box? Concept chicken, phrasal verse, fast learners, slow learners. Now you, you, you finish teaching switch off. How can you, or what kind of concept questions would you ask for fast learners and for slow learners? Let's start with switch off. Write two questions, one, fast learners and two slow learners. Please write in the chat box. And then I says, yeah, I won. She gets it right. Good. 
write some questions for fast learners or slow learners? Yeah, to um, for concept checking. Yeah. There's no answers yet. We that says, who switch, who switches the light off when you want to sleep? This is for fast learners. Very interesting lesson, one. Lesson says, uh, can you switch off the light, please? I think this one is for slow learners. At Samia says, do you switch off your phone when you want to sleep? Ilham, can you switch off the light? Very good. Wow, I, I really like these um, questions. Very interesting. Now, as you see, you are teaching two, two abilities. You are teaching fast learners and slow learners. So please, when you move to concept checking stage, you have to um, uh, work on your concept questions for fast and for slow learners. Now, let's move to number three. Turn, uh, sorry, for number two. Sign out, sign out, the same question. Now we've moved to sign out. Abdel Razak says one, put the verb in a sentence for fast learners. We have moved to sign out. Please, could you write any sentences for sign out for fast learners or slow learners? Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. These are really very interesting. I like them a lot. Very interesting questions when you are teaching mixed ability classes. Okay, so for for slow learners, we can give them choices. We have we have a, a answer. Huda says fast. Put sign out in a sentence. Uh huh. I mean, oh, they good. would ask them. Interesting. Uh, Salim says, when you sign out of Facebook, are you still in it? Wow. Huda says, for slow, what does sign out mean in Arabic? Very good. So sign out for slow learners. When you use your Facebook, when you sign out, do you finish or do you start? Choices, do you finish or do you start? Uh, now for fast learners, okay, can you put sign out in a meaningful sentence? You add challenges. Okay, so um, now let's move on to the next, next slide. Good, now we move to practice. Okay, so here, practice, uh, we are going to start with the completion task. And here we are going to use uh, specific level materials or material. I'm going to use two materials, but uh, um, the two materials for fast learners and for slow learners. And as you see here, this is a context. Students are going to read and they are going to complete or Feeling okay, they are going to complete now. My question this one, uh, chart number one is it for fast learners or slow learners? And chart number two is it for fast learners or slow learners? Can you write this is chart number one and this is chart number two? So, what do you think? Which one is for fast and which one is for slow learners? Can you please write in the chat box one, slow or fast? Two, slow or fast? Waiting for your comments, your ideas. One slow, Abdul Munaim says one slow. All right. We did also says one for slow. Samira also the first for slow. And Abdul Munaim says the second is for fast. Fateva, one for slow, the first one. <laughs> 
chart, the first chart is for slow learners. Huda says two for fast. Yes. Lehsen says the first one is for fast learners. Samira, the first one is for slow. Huda, the second one is for fast. The first one is for slow learners. Yeah. That's really interesting. Okay. Very good. All right. Just one second. Yeah. Um, the first one, the first one. So I'm going to design two activities. I'm going to put them into groups and the groups based on the same level. Slow learners in this group and fast learners are in this group. Okay. Because when you are dealing with mixed ability class, you have two types of grouping. Either you put them according to their same level, same ability, or you mix them. Now I start with the um, specific level materials. I designed two materials, okay. So phrasal verbs, meaning switch off. This is number one is for fast, sorry, for slow learners because they have got already the, the definitions, the, the meaning, okay. For the second one, I added challenges. I gave them only the phrasal verbs and they have to guess from the context, the meaning and to write it. Now, you will not have a problem with mixed ability classes because all the time we have to challenge fast learners and we have to facilitate for slow learners, which means that we have to prepare at home. Good, now let's move to the next one. Uh, my question, did you like this activity about grouping? Okay, according to their levels, then you design two materials, two activities. Mr. Hussein, um, could you please raise your voice? I think they don't. Okay, hear you. let's move They're on like... before they write. Yeah, do you hear me now? Do you hear me now? Yes, they said yes. So Hakima says the second yes. chart is challenging because they have to give definitions. Very good. Yeah, it's because they are going to give definitions. So we, we added challenges, okay. But for the second one, we, prov we provided them with definitions, with meanings. They have just to um, uh, find the right uh, uh, phrasal verb. Okay, good. Now for the second, this is task number one. Task number two, uh, this is what I talked. If, you, if we go back to, the, to the, the activities or the lessons that I showed you about the Moroccan textbooks, they, they missed, there was something missing about communicative activities. Now, I'm going to use find someone who, and most teachers use find someone who game only in the big of the class, the first meeting with students. But we can, we can, find, we can use find someone who uh, also in the middle of the, uh, of the year or after we finish a certain unit, etc. So look here, I'm going to tell my learners because it's communication interaction, fun, they stand up, they find their partners. So please, I'm going to, to um, this is for the two, by the way, for the two levels, fast and slow learners. I'm going to say, now you get the worksheets, you stand up all of you and try to ask questions. Um, and you take into account question one or sentence one to sentence number seven. And you write the name of the people. For example, number one, Find someone who seldom hands in his, her, his or her homework on time, Muhammad. So you write Muhammad. For slow learners, look here, it's very important. And I experienced this. For slow learners, they will go to the fast learners. It's scary, what do you think? I don't understand. What is this in Arabic? And they are helping each other. Okay, so working together, helping each other. And there is fun. There is communication, there is interaction, there is collaboration because they stand all together and they find as many uh, classmates as they can and they write their names. Good, now um, here, let's practice. I'm going to practice this with the, our moderator. So find someone who seldom hands in his or, home, or her homework on time. What do you think, Miriam? Seldom you hand in your homework? I'm sorry, could you please repeat the question? I was um, reading the comments. Yeah, we are practicing now for find someone. So I'm going to read this one. Find someone who seldom mm -hmm. hands in his or her homework on time. If it is yes, I'm gonna write your name, yes or no? Yes, okay. 
Usually so, right Maryam, I'm going to explain. <laughs> Number two, find someone who always turns off the lights when she watches a, uh, she watches a, a, a film at night. Yes okay, or we no? can. Uh, yes, okay. Good. So, can you please uh, let's do it with the audience? Uh, yes. Before question number one, can you write your name? If it is yes, number one. Find someone okay. who seldom has in his or her homework on time. On time. And my name says yes. Uh, uh, says yes. Najwa, yes. All right. Interesting. Good. For question for number two, find someone who always turns off the lights when she or he watches a film at night. Najwa, yes, says yes. Okay. Me, Abdul <laughs> Muni, me, Halima, me also. Abdul Kabir, also. Abdul Ali, yeah. also. For number three, find someone who ate out at the restaurant but forgot the money at home. Wow, this is fun. Yes or no? They are going yeah. to have fun. Yeah. And you see, there is interaction, there is communication, and there is we are creating a fun learning environment. And in the Moroccan context, we say, if you if you eat at a restaurant and you forget or you forgot your money, what are you going to do? You wash to the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> you wash the dishes. Yes. All right. So can you write number three? Yes or no? They say my Hakim is my brother, but I'm my close friend. It's just to, so that you can pay. <laughs> All right. Samira, not me, but Samira. This game encourages in, interactional practice among students. We could also ask them to write their own sentences. Yes. Good. Number four, find someone who picked up a wallet, which you saw in the street, a wallet, and be honest. <laughs> no, not me. Right. Khadija says, never, Lehsan, not me. Okay. Lehsan. Okay. Yeah, me, yeah, one day I found it. I found a, wet, uh, a wallet um, in a supermarket, uh, and I was with, with other three teachers, my colleagues. We waited, okay? But at the end, we found no one, okay? And we, uh, um, I mean, in the pocket, there was um, 70 dirhams. And it was very generous. I divided it into three, okay. Each one took, I guess, 20 or something like that, 20 dirhams. Number five, find someone who stands up before answering the teacher's question. Yes or no? When you answer, says, you my sister. Up? No, I don't. Okay. Maybe at the primary school, we yes. used to do it. Yeah. Good, number six, find someone who filled in a summer job application but it was turned down. You want to work as a part-time job in the summer, but it was turned down. Yeah, before no. getting a job, yeah, I it happened to me many times. Hassan says me, Hazar also me, Samira, I used to. Good, that's nice. And Can number seven, it? yeah, I good. Number seven, back. find some, good. Number seven, which is very interesting again. Find someone who cheated on the English exam with a phone by looking up some words. Be honest and tell us, I did. yes or no? Yes, I did, I admit. <laughs> Good, others. How this is me, less than me. Wow. Khadija, yes, in primary school. Wow. Samira, no, not me. Samira, good. Wow. Hassan, not me. <laughs> Selma, me. Hussein, also. Nijia, also. She had a friend of mine. Iman, me. Dikram, like, no. Fatima, not me. All right. That's, that's interesting. Very interesting. Good. Now, please, uh, can you write in the chat book your comments about this activity? Is there fun? Is there communication? What do you think? Do you like it or not? Please write in the chat box. And also what they can learn about each other, the teacher yes. and the students. Yeah, interesting. How do you like this game? Um, Awatif says, yes, good one. 
لمساهل حمزه I'm a professional one okay all right nice um, Abd Samih uh, says, Professor Qtras, what are some games, like activities, we can use to teach grammar, like find someone ha who, um, and etc., like some other activities they can use? Yeah, uh, there are many, there are many activities based on communication, okay. Um, for example, uh, this is a, it's a kind of questionnaire. Find someone who is a, is a questionnaire activity, okay. It's a questionnaire. Um, activity and uh, you can use dialogue, you can um, use uh, miming activities, um, you can use role plays. You see, there are many, or you can use the Simon says, you give them the phrasal verb and they have to act it out. So there are many, many ways. So I guess here there is, there is, there is communication, there is fun, there's collaboration, and it's not mechanical. Do you agree or not? Yes, they all like the, this, this game. They all say that it's motivated, it's very funny, it's effective, it's great to use. All right. Let's move on to the next slide. Now, this is practice number two. Now, production. Okay, here, I'm going again to use two materials. Using, I'm going to create one, but I'm going to use specific level materials. So my question, my question is uh, this one, is it, so we have two activities. Is this activity number one, is it for slow learners or fast learners? Is this activity number two for slow learners or fast learners? All right, one, slow or fast, two, fast or slow, just right. So we'll have two activities. I'm going to design for my learners. Okay, so giving them the time to answer, uh, Khadija asks a question. She says, is it difficult to create this activity in large class? Yes, it's gonna work uh, for both, for small and large classes. Okay, for small and large classes. For large classes, you have just to, um, to master the classroom management, how to control your class, okay? Because if you don't know how to manage your class, uh, whatever activities you use, you have only confusion, disorder, troubles in class. Yeah, so chaos. The, 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 find someone who activity can be used for small and large classes. Okay, good, any yes. answers? Yes, um, Abdul Mwenaim says one, uh, uh, the first one is for slow. The first, uh, Sophia says the first one is for slow. The second is fast. Uh, Huda, first one is slow. Um, Fatima, the second is fast. Fatima, the first one is slow. Sumaya, the second right. is, yeah. Very good, that's interesting, that's interesting. Yes, so it's clear. So number one, number one is for slow learners, why? because we added definitions. We explained the phrasal verbs. For the second one, there is no definition. We added challenges for fast learners. Good. Now, I'm going to use miming activity. Okay. Let me see, sorry. Okay. So this is the instruction. I'm going to use miming activity. I'm going to bring this. For example, you can bring two boxes, two cups, two balls, etc. And here we have some about phrasal verbs. So look here. This is a, let me just here. If you can see, this is a pass away, which means this is a for fast learners. I'm gonna put it here. Okay. Now the second one. Look here. The second one I put here, come across. So come across. Come across plus the definition. The definition is to find someone by chance. But I'm not going to tell my learners that here, it's very easy, but here it's difficult. I'm not gonna tell them this. So here we have 
phrasal verbs with definitions and phrasal verbs with no definitions. Now I'm going to tell them to guess, to mind the activity. Please, I want a volunteer to come to, uh, to come in front of um, the, uh, I mean, to the board and to mind the activity. They are going to raise their hand. If the fast learner, if I'm going to choose the fast learner, I'm going to give them this one to choose because here there is no definition. If I'm going to choose the, the slow learners, I'm going to give them this one, this box or this cup or bowl. Okay, when you, you put this um, piece, piece of papers, okay. And they don't know, okay. So why they shouldn't know? So as to avoid, um, I mean, so that they cannot uh, feel hurt. It's a very interesting activity that I do with my students. I design two activities, but they don't know. One, I, I facilitate and the other one, I added challenges. Okay, so what do you think about this one? Do you think it's interesting? Yes, it's very in interesting. Salim says, nice, smart. Um, Abdul Kabir says it would be a good activity. Salim right. says, I like that. Good, that's interesting. Now let's move on to the next one. The last activity, the last one. So look here, I'm going to use game, board race. I'm going to, to, um, uh, to run quickly to the board. So the tips, the teacher selects two students to compete for each round. Number two, the two students must belong to the same level. Winston's raise their hands, I'm going to choose the same level, fast learners, the second round, slow learners, etc. But students should not know that, that so that they won't feel hurt. They shouldn't know that you are both slow learners and you are both fast learners. They don't know. Only the teacher who knows. Number three, teacher uses simple instructions with slow learners. Number five or four, teacher adds challenges to fast learners. I'm gonna explain, this is the game. Now, I'm going to write on the board all the phrasal verbs that my learners um, studied. I'm going to say, now I want two volunteers. I'm going to tell you the meaning of the phrasal verb and you run to the board and you color. I'm going to give them two colors, green group and red group. The first one to run and to color is the winner. For example, here, they are going to run. Let me show you. They are going to run. So here we have the red color. They are going to, to color like this. If you are the first to color, plus one for red color. If it's the green, plus one for the green. Good, now, hello my students. So let's play the board race game. I need two volunteers. Okay, yes, now in my mind, I'm going to choose slow learners. Muhammad, Leila, good. Can you stand here? When I say the definition, you run. I'm gonna simplify. Okay. Restaurant. I'm gonna just, just say one word. Restaurant. Simplifying. They are gonna run and they are going to do like this. Okay, very good, red group. Give a clap to the red. Etc. Okay, good. Now, two other volunteers, this uh, Saeed and Muna. Ah, now I choose fast learners. I'm gonna change, I'm gonna add challenges. Okay, so the first time you wanna go to the, uh, the hotel, what do you do at first? Can someone write, please, can you write? What do you do when you go to the hotel the first time? What's the phrasal verb? What do you do? You check in. Okay. You eat out, Abdul Kabir says eat out. Uh, the first time you go to the, to the, hot, to the ho uh, hotel, what do you do? The Hasnia uh, says fill in, Awatif check in, Yasin check in. Okay, so here we have filling and check is difficult. So the right answer is to check in. Okay, very good for the, the green. 
the green group, okay? So as you see with slow and fast learners, we change, we facilitate and we add challenges. Now, when you stop for fast learners, when you are not interested in studies and you stop and you don't go no more to, to school. So look here, increasing the input and output. Okay, so what's the phrasal verb? Can you write please? The phrasal verb. There are no answers yet. Okay. When you drop out. Learning. Awata says uh, drop out. Very good. So fast learners with red color. Good. Now I'm going to choose again two slow learners. Okay. So here I'm going to, to use only one word. To search. To search. Okay. So they know search to facilitate. It's uh, was the answer for slow learners. It's uh, I'm waiting for the response. Look for, send message, look for. Very good. So the green group, uh, okay. So at the end, then you count how many the the, the group um, that, that, that is going to get a lot of um, correct or circles, okay? They are the winners. Then you can give them chocolate or candies or something just for the sake of motivation. Yes, any comment? Did you like this game again, this activity? Now we're adding fun. Did you like it? Um, uh, there, there is a question by Lesson. He says, wait, uh, I should. Uh, okay, how much time we should devote to those games? So it depends. Basically, 10, 7 minutes are really good. Here you can use all the phrasal verbs or just five phrasal verbs or 10 phrasal verbs. It depends on you. You are the boss in your class. Okay, so seven minutes, 10 minutes are great. Okay, good. Any comments about this one? Yes, Hannah says, yes, so interesting. She had very interesting at the Rasaq. Yes, he enjoyed it. Fatima, I like this game. It is so engaging. Yes. Thank you. Now, let's move on. The summary. Okay. Now for the audience. Okay. Our attendees um, on Facebook Live. Now I want you to summarize. When teaching challenging grammar points, number one starts with M. What is it? Can you write in the chat box? Can you write? Can you guess what's the first um, word? Engaging, fulfilling, meaning. Jihad says meaning. Emma says motivate. Huda says motivate. Hakima motivating. Excellent. Yes, very good job. Yeah, so number one, motivate students first. Number two. Number two. We there are move two to number two. There's a question by um, Sarah. I think we can answer her. Yes, Waiting for the answers. Okay. Simple, short. Um, okay, so it's so. difficult. So use the answer. At Samira said simple. Fatima Zara simplifying. Samira suitable. Ikram simple, short. All right. I think they couldn't make it. Let's move to number three. Okay. Avoid teaching what? Okay. 
errors. She had says errors. Uh huh. All right. Good. What about present grammar? Present grammar in you starts with C. Question four. Yeah, just to remind our attendees that there is the um, the the form that they have to um, fill in for getting their certificates. Yes, but I have a difficulty sharing it. I, I try to share it from the very beginning and the link, I don't know what happens when okay, the link sharing, cannot. No yes, please. Uh, as Matt says, context, Ibtisam, context. Said communicative way. Fatima context, Muhammad context. Very interesting context. Good job. Next, start with very common grammar P. Now we move to. A word that starts with P. Okay. I'm waiting for their answers. Uh, what it says, practice. Zakaria point. Samira point. Ali point. Very good points. Thank you. Now next, use the C. You have two words to help students discover the form. A word that begins with C. Color coding, Hannah, Hannah says. Excellent. Fatima, color coding. Thank you. Very good job. Good learners. Um, next, D, your instructions. D, a word that begins with D. Nothing yet. Um, I, I'm afraid, uh, Mr. Hussein, that the link, you didn't share the link to the, the form. Okay. In this case, they have just to write their full names and uh... their email. Yeah. OK, so lesson says define. Fatima, demonstrate Abdul Ghani diversity. Is Matt demonstrate Iman direct? No, I'm sorry. Move next. Design. C. Activist design. Design a word or that can't, that begins with C. Communicative, communicative Ali says communicative. Hanan says communicative. Excellent. Thank you. Very good job. I like it. Correct. The last one, create. To create what? A very small word that begins with F. Create fun. Hannah says create fun. Bravo, very Ikram good job. Free. Yeah. Great. That's interesting. Good. So, mm -hmm. Good. So they couldn't answer this one. Number two and number and number. this one. Yes. I'm going to give you extra time. What do you think?
we're, we're thinking about the second sentence and one, two, three, four, five, and the seventh one, the seventh one. Jihad says simple. Samia said degrade. Fatima suitable. Asma student centered. Yeah, now I'm challenging you. <laughs> With a specific short. Samira mm -hmm. seven distinguish. Abdurzak suitable. All right. So let me give you the answer. So as you see, I'm, I'm even challenging fast learners, okay? Um, so the answer is, this is the answer. Number one, motivate students first. Number two, use specific level materials. Avoid teaching everything. Present grammar in context. Start with very common grammar points. Color coding. Differentiate your instructions. Fast learners, slow learners. Communicative activities and create fun. Thank you. You were amazing today. I really liked all your questions, your comments. That was really great. Good. Now, Discussion questions for uh, five minutes and we call it a day. Yes, please, Miriam. Yes, I've gathered yeah, some questions. So uh, Sammy uh, asked, do you think game activity, activities serve the situation if some students feel bored and not engaged? Do you think do you think game activities serve the situation if some students feel bored and not engaged? Interesting. This is the, the, the question that we have to ask. Why our students are bored? They feel bored could you after. please could you please raise your um, volume? Do you hear me? Yes, perfect. Now. Good. Uh, why students feel bored? Why? Because there is no fun in the classroom. Because there is no variety of activities. Because the activities are are uh, based on, or they are mechanical activities. Okay because there is no interaction. So using games, but we use game for a purpose of learning. We don't, we, don't, we don't use games for fun. No, fun is just the means. Behind the means there is learning. Okay, not just having fun and having fun. At the end, students will not respect you and they will not believe what you are saying, but you are using games for the sake of learning, helping our learners to get motivation, okay? Perfect. The second question was from Khalid. Uh, please, would you elaborate on form and meaning? Yeah, I said um, uh, some teachers start with the form, then the meaning. Others from the meaning, then the form. Now, if you are opting, if you are uh, uh, adopting the communicative language teaching, it's good to start with the meaning. Students should know, should understand what is a simple past. It's ED with the regular verbs. Then they can use the regular verbs, play. They cannot say I played and they don't know what does it mean I played. So it's better to start with meaning than the form. It's good. Okay. This is the best way. If you start with the form, then after that, the meaning, yeah, it may work with some classes. All right. Perfect. Uh, the Sumia says, it will not be difficult to correct the exercises when having two different materials. Can you repeat, it will not? It will not be difficult to correct uh, the exercises when having two different materials. It will not be difficult to correct the two exercises. Uh -huh. the exercises when having two different materials. I mean, I, I guess she's trying to say, is it not difficult to correct? Uh -huh, yeah, good, yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's difficult. I'm not going to say it's easy. It's difficult, yeah. It's difficult when you are teaching mixed ability classes. When you are teaching mixed ability classes, you divide them into groups. Sometimes you group them according to the same level. You mix them. It depends. Now, if you are grouping them all the time, you have to be next to the 
slow learners. They need you. They need help from you. Uh, but for fast learners, you put them there and you let them work. You challenge them. They can do it by themselves, okay? But you have to monitor, you have to walk, you have to ask, etc. So it's challenging, okay? But designing good materials will help. Yeah. Perfect. So um, Samira says, so I noticed that activities generally begin for the slow learners benefit. Is it made on purpose or it does not matter? Uh, you mean these activities? All the activities, yeah, that we played. Uh-huh. Good. Yeah, the activities that we, uh, uh, we have, by the way, we have had different activities. We have got activities for slow learners and activities for fast learners and activities for the two levels at the same time. Okay. But it's always, it's a, it's a great idea to start with simplifying it. Okay. Very easy activities. Okay. For slow learners, then fast learners. Perfect. Um, Mohammed says, can we say that separation, the separation of high and low achievers can make low achievers lower in their performance? Good. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, now your job um, is uh, is to try your best. I, between two brackets, two quotes, best. You are doing your best because it's difficult to teach mixed ability classes. You are going to implement the easy or the difficult easy framework so as not your learners will not feel frustrated. If they feel frustrated, they will not come to your classes or they will be there, but there is no learning. So you do your best. You design activities based on specific level materials or the same levels. Okay, at least you help them, you motivate them to learn something. They will not be great, maybe in the future, because learn in the process. Once you help them and you gain their self esteem and they believe in themselves, they can study by themselves and they can get improved and get progress. You see my point. So, in your classes, you will not make them. Um, great learners, but at least you will help them so as not to feel frustrated and to know at least something in, in your class. You are not expected from the teacher's side to make them perfect learners, okay, but just you try to help them a little bit. Yes. There is also another question. Uh, you said, uh, it's by Jihad, you said that we can divide students, then assign them to groups with students with whom they share the same level. My question is, do we need to design two types of tests? One is for high achievers and the other for low achievers. Not sure if you already provided an answer for my question or not. Uh -huh. A very interesting question. No, when it comes to testing, to exams, there is no, uh, I mean, uh, uh, specific level exams or specific level uh, materials or activities, okay? Because uh, the students you are going to have, the mixed ability that you are going to have, you may have slow learners, but in geography, history, or math, they are fast learners and vice versa. So you design the exam based on the whole class. But how to design the exam? You have different um, exercises. First one, two, three, what do, we, what do we know? That the first one easy, the third one somehow easy, the third one uh, difficult, and the fourth one very challenging. So you cannot design two exams, one for slow and one for faster, no way, no. Perfect, thank okay, you for I your- Okay, I guess opinion. that's enough, Miriam, or there are other more questions? Yes, there are um, just one, yes. la well, last one. The last one. Yes, uh, I teach, uh, it's by Samira, I teach uh, eighth grade, ninth grade and uh, students and I find difficulty in managing group work because they can't stop using Arabic. How can I deal with it? Any comments? Okay, yeah, it's very interesting question again. It's about classroom management. Good, so you are, you are teaching ninth grade. You are lucky because they are the first time to learn the language, it's number one. Number two, the, in the very beginning of the year, the first time you meet your learners, you establish that we call code of conduct or the classroom principles or values. So they have to know that when you put them in groups, they have to be on task. And your job is to monitor, which means that we are not playing. Monitoring makes learners be on task and you take it seriously, okay? 
you tell them, I'm going to put you in groups. You are not going to find 100% all are engaged, but at least they are working together. If some are, um, they are chatting or something like that, it's not, it's not a problem. But if the whole class are chatting and talking about something not related to, to the textbook okay, or to the lesson, there is a problem. Now for using Arabic, it's a very good question. When you use Arabic with students, they use Arabic with you. When you don't use Arabic, they, they, they try to challenge themselves and to use English. For example, during, in the first contact with learners, you provide them with the classroom language. What is the classroom language? Teacher, I have a question. Teacher, I want to go to the bathroom. Teacher, can you explain? Teacher, what does this mean this in Arabic? Teacher, can we work in partners? You have to provide them and they have to practice the classroom language. They have to practice this. Then they will use the, the language. Number two, you have to use uh, interesting materials. You have to use visual aids because if you speak a lot, you confuse them. They have low level. They are just ninth grade, okay, students. So use pictures, use videos, simple instructions, and that would help. But if all the time using Arabic, they will use Arabic too. Okay. I guess, um, yeah, Miriam, okay. Yes, I, I hope you've learned a lot from this, um, from this talk. And I hope you've learned how to teach challenging grammar points to fast and slow learners, and that you learned how to apply the two uh, frameworks in your classes. So now it's your turn to start practicing these tools and applying them in your everyday classes. And uh, practice makes perfect. That's, that's all I need to say. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Maryam. Thanks the audience for following us. Um, the questions, the comments were amazing. We learned from each other. I also learned from your questions. Thanks again and see you in, in the, the coming uh, webinars. Thanks a lot. All Thank right, you. Have a nice day.